This exhibition is being held in the uh, Macintosh Gallery of the Glasgow School of Art in April of 2009. Charles Rennie Macintosh, the designer of this building for the Glasgow School of Art, was very influenced by uh, Japanese art at the uh, end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. This exhibition was curated by Glasgow artist Ronnie Heaps, who also designed the catalogue, and is based upon my own collection of tarot cards. I first came across the, the work of Adam McLean in 2007, when I was asked to do a show for the Embassy Gallery in, uh, in Edinburgh. This was part of the, uh, the Edinburgh Festival and they asked me if I would create a show then. Now, I knew that Adam had a really big collection of alchemy images and I suggested they would do a show about that. And uh, it was very successful and we made like, a catalogue for it. Now the curator, the Macintosh Gallery, came along to the show and she bought a catalogue. Uh, and we were having a chat about this and she suggested that we might do another show in her gallery. And uh, I approached Adam about this. And he thought, okay, he really wanted to do a show about his tarot card collection. He's actually got a huge tarot card collection. It's probably one of the biggest in the world. So he was keen to do a show about that. So we did indeed get that together. Now, this, this collection, as I say, it was massive, but we decided just to concentrate on the, the Japanese section of it, because it'd be much more uh, easy to do in this particular space. Also, the Japanese like uh, tarot have, have not got a very long tradition. They actually just started in the 70s. Now, this is a good example of how a culture which doesn't have a particular tradition of tarot can, can accept it and embrace it and actually turn it into its own culture. In fact, very Japanese. And when you actually see the show, uh, this comes across really well. I understand that uh, that's, that's why this is uh, quite... Uh what did you ever ask uh, Adam to come and, and uh, give us uh, the fruits of his insight into uh, uh, the art of Japanese tarot? Um, what does tarot mean to us today? Usually we just think of um, a tarot reader in a t their tent or in their um, studio turning over cards and telling people's fortunes. Um, that's the image that really comes to us. So why, why is tarot in, in this art environment? Well, for myself, this began with collecting tarot cards. And um, for me, this was a, goes back to the 1970s and the early 80s. My interest in tarot began to wane, and I still had a vague contact with some of the people involved. But about, I think it was about six, five or six years ago, I just took, <laughs> took an interest suddenly in, in looking at tarot, and I was just shocked to find, you know, th you know thousands of different designs. And I, thought, I must find out some more about this. So I started, then I began to realize that there was nowhere you could go to study tarot cards. You know, I'd go to the university library and get books out and study books on all sorts of subjects, but I couldn't get tarot cards out to look, to look at. So, and, you know, when I switched on the computer and got things up on the screen, all you could see was these little JPEGs, and you, you, you could see no detail of the artwork. So I thought, well, there's only one way to do it, and that's to actually begin collecting the, the cards yourself. So that's what I did. Tarot developed in Italy some 500 years before it made its appearance in Japan. So the first section of our exhibition gives a quick look back to the origins of tarot. The first tarot images were created as artworks, gifts commissioned for wealthy families in Northern Italy around 1450. Here we see a reproduction of the Visconti Sforza Tarot. 
As you see, it is in the form of hand-painted images applied with gold leaf in the style of an illuminated manuscript of that time, though on 78 separate leaves. The imagery here drew on emblems that were common in the art of that time. A decade or so after Visconti Sforza was created, a set of emblematic images was issued as engravings. Though not a set of tarot cards as such, this Tarocci of Mantegna drew on emblems and created images that were influential on later tarot art. By the late 16th and early 17th centuries, tarot had become a popular card game and was issued through block printing or woodcuts, usually hand colored. Here we see some examples of the Tarot of Marseille decks, many different styles of which were issued at that time. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Tarot became absorbed into the esoteric and magical systems that were then emerging. One of the most influential of these is the so-called Rider Waite Tarot of 1909, published by Ryder and Co and devised by Arthur Edward Waite, based on the teachings of his magical order. The artwork was created by one of his colleagues, the artist Pamela Coleman-Smith. Taro first appeared in Japan in the 1960s, when a few books were written about the subject, and some tarot decks were imported from America and Europe. But it was not until the 1970s that Japanese artists and publishers began to produce actual decks. The first deck produced in Japan would appear to be the Kaishobu in 1974. This is based on the Rider Waite deck and the Marseille style tarot. Other early Japanese decks include the New Egyptian tarot, based on a late 19th century French deck, and the Renaissance style deck, which also draws its imagery and style from early European tarot decks. The Petit Tarot of 1979 is more contemporary, as we can see from the way the figures are depicted in hippie or New Age style. The early 1980s saw many interesting new tarots. The Maneo Maya Tarot used depictions of faces with an almost modern manga form, and the artist Maneo Maya later became famous for creating one of the early manga series. A strange item is the ukiyo-e tarot. When people see this deck, they immediately come to the conclusion that this is what Japanese tarot must be about. Classical Japanese imagery, kimonos, screens, landscapes, samurai and so on. This deck, however, was conceived of by the American tarot publisher Stuart Kaplan. He tried various artists but was unsatisfied with the result until he found Koji Furata, who created this tarot based on woodblock print styles. So this is really an American's view of what a Japanese tarot should look like. In 1982 and 3, a Japanese doctor, Shigeki Gomi, became fascinated by tarot imagery and he devised three tarot decks. One was on the theme of human anatomy, the medical fantasy tarot, another on Buddhist iconography, while the third, the entropy tarot, turns to modern physics for its inspiration. More tarot appeared in the late 1980s in a number of different styles. In 1989, you see the first tarot aimed at young children. One of the important tarot designers of this period was Alexandria Mukaseo. He had many ideas for tarot card designs and then found an artist to create this for him. Among his extensive output are a number of truly original conceptions. In 1980, for example, 
he created the first circular tarot, the nature tarot. The next section of our exhibition presents Japanese tarot, not so much in historical order, but rather looking at the various themes and styles and the different ways in which tarots are presented to particular audiences. In the early 1990s, a large number of tarot began to appear. The artists often turned to classical art styles, thus we find many were devised in an Art Nouveau or Art Deco style. Some tarot artists turn to traditional Japanese imagery for inspiration. Among these we note two tarots created by Kazumi Niyakura for Mondo Oki. Another wonderful tarot using Japanese imagery is that created for the astrologer and card reader, Moon Princess Himoko. Tarots have been issued as promotional items, given away as free gifts at the opening of various events or used to promote a product in some way. The Moranaga High Crown Chocolate Company used two tarots as incentives to encourage people to buy the chocolate bars. If you collected enough wrappers, you could send off for a rather magnificent tarot deck. They even had one for milk chocolate and one for plain. In Japan, publishers of manga, computer games, and so on, tolerate fans creating artwork based on the characters in their products. These dozenshi fan art products are sold and traded extensively. Among these are a number of tarot decks incorporating facets of an anime, manga, or computer game. The Gundam Wing is an example. Here, a group of fans have created a tarot based upon the anime Gundam Wing first shown in Japanese television in 1995 and 96. In Japan, many magazines use free gifts for Roku as an incentive for people to buy their magazine. Taro are often used as gifts, as they can be printed within the magazine to be cut out by the purchaser. Here we see a number of such taros. Many of these are difficult to collect, as they are not valued by the purchasers and thrown away with the magazine. Manga is a cartoon style that developed in Japan as early as the 1950s. It merges the American comic book tradition with an earlier form of graphic imagery in Japan. Manga began to evolve into its own unique style in the 1970s. By the 1990s, it was so well developed that it influenced taro art. Sailor Moon was a hugely successful anime on Japanese television based on a manga series from 1991 to 95. A more dark and gloomy manga is that of 2001 Onwards by Titi Kubo, which was made into an anime entitled Bleach. Here we see a Dujinshi Taro using the characters from that series. Children in Japan seem to like collecting cards, so it is perhaps not surprising that many tarots have been produced for the children's market. What perhaps is surprising is that these usually remain true to the imagery of the tarot and resist the impulse to merely issue a series of cards attractive to children. So we still recognise the familiar tarot arcana, even when this is presented for a children's audience. Everyone likes cats, so these are often the theme for a tarot deck. There must be 30 or so worldwide, with at least six cat-themed tarots in Japan. Tarot is often seen as a popular art form, but many artists from the fine art world have turned to tarot imagery for inspiration. This is true also for Japan. Just as one example, 
Yoko Neil Ori Tokoro is a well-respected art photographer with many exhibitions to his credit. In 2001, he issued a tarot based upon computer-modified posed photographs. Computer games have become very popular, especially in Japan, the home of many such games. Often these are issued with tarot cards, or indeed used tarot cards, as a means for playing the game. The Persona 3 game from 2006 was issued with a rather fine tarot, which uses silhouettes for the imagery. Costume and fashion are a key part of many people's lives. Tarot has been used to promote fashion-related publications, and a golf tarot was a wonderful free gift given away at the launch of a fashion collection. A costume tarot was produced in 2005 by the theatrical costume designer Keiko Shibata, who has a special interest in masks. The Fool is one of the tarot cards known to most people. Classically, he is depicted as an innocent walking along, oblivious to the fact that he is about to step off a precipice. Tarot artists have, however, extended this image and approached it from a number of different perspectives. The death card is notorious. In tarot readings, the appearance of this card can be very unsettling. Tarot artists in the West often rework death into a card of transformation, rebirth, even resurrection. In Japan, it seems, tarot artists prefer their death cards to stick closer to the original conception. So here, skeletons, skulls, and the grim reaper are still prominent. This exhibition is particularly important as it has been held in an art environment. It asks people to look at tarot designs as artwork rather than as cards for fortune telling. We see in these exhibits, taken from my collection of nearly 200 decks, how the creative and inventive artists of Japan found in tarot an exciting, lively form of expression. This exhibition celebrates the creativity and style of the art of Japanese tarot.